Hello, and thanks for joining me. Welcome back. This stunning piece here, and I cannot believe I've not done a video on this Casio yet. This is one of my favorite pieces. And I've been after one of these SW100s for years, absolute years. No collector that I know of, no eBay site, no Etsy, no nothing like that. Had no one had one of these for sale, even even in rubbish condition. No one had one for sale, and all of a sudden, I'm searching through eBay, and this guy in Spain, I think, or Portugal, had one in mint condition, unused, and. I don't care what the price was, I just bought it. Because I know I would never see one again. Especially as I waited that long. And here it is. And as you probably agree, it's very 80s. Now this watch first came out in 1986. Let me just take it off my wrist and then um, we'll have a proper look. So do you know what's sad about this watch? I do wear it quite often because I love it. But my only concern is because it's made out of resin, plastic, injection molded, it doesn't take much for this to mark anywhere. Just a little tap anywhere on the brick wall, on a door frame, in and out of a car, someone bumps into you, whatever the reason is, it would not take any effort to mark this and I would absolutely hate it so when I do go out I actually guard it like this no one to touch my watch but um yeah I wear it around the house sometimes um I don't really to be honest I don't really go out with it I don't want to go out with it either to everyone else it'd just be a pile of 10 pound if you ask someone in a shop oh what do you think this cost and they look at Casio and they look at his plastic they would just think it's a kid's watch that's just been released and it's 15 20 dollars or 20 pounds but it ain't this watch will set you back i don't know maybe three four five hundred pounds if a true collector wanted it they'll pay whatever it takes i mean up to a certain amount right now because it's been unused and all these years um, the alarm on it is pretty loud. So with Casio's, you've got um, the piezo. It's a spring at the back on the module, and it touches this part here. I'll show you one. As we're on a Casio subject, I want to show you. So look, this is my little box full of spares. So this here was actually half. Normally they're round, but happy to get one this half. Let me see if we've got another one to show you. Somewhere, there they are, there they are. Look, this will be, this will be better. So this is what, the back of a watch, and this one is a VDB 1000. That's a very old watch, by the way. Oh my God, it's got a sticker on it. Jesus Christ. There we are, finally found one. Oh, what's this? Um, oh, CA53, so it's a calculator watch. What year is that? Oh, it's a 1985 one. So that there is a piezo. And that is what makes the little buzzing noise where you go beep beep. And on the module, I think I have a module here, like this, there'll be a little spring at the back coming out. And when that spring makes contact with this, that is what makes the sound. Now, the more you press that time and time and time again, the less the sound becomes. It comes quieter and quieter. Like I have, I have watches that they have been used, but they're very good condition. But if you, if you press the buzzer, you can just about hear it. So it's quite, quite low. Anyway, if, you, if I press this one here, look. See how loud it is? And you know what? I'll tell you something else that's really sad. I hate pressing the buttons on this watch. I don't want it, I don't want anything to be worn out. Like these 
buttons on top here, they wear out very quickly because they hit two little pads on the bottom. And these are notorious for the pads to wear out. And then you've got to press it harder and harder and harder. So I'm not going to run through it, but it's just, it's nothing special, the feature. So you've got an alarm. Let's see if I can, hold on. Let me, if I can just put the alarm on for you. Is it this one or is it this one? So look, this is my little box for the spares. So this here was actually half. Normally they're round, but happy to get one this half. Let me see if I've got another one to show you. Somewhere, there they are, there they are. Look, this will be, this will be better. So this is what, the back of a watch, and this one is a VDB 1000. That's a very old watch, by the way. Oh my God, it's got a sticker on it. Jesus Christ. There we are. Finally found one. Oh, what's this? Um, oh, CA53. So there's a calculator watch. What year is that? Oh, it's a 1985 one. So that there is a piezo. And that is what makes the little buzzing noise. Where you go beep, beep. And on the module, I think I have a module here. Like this there'll be a little spring at the back coming out and when that spring makes contact with this that is what makes the sound now the more you press that time and time and time again the less the sound becomes it comes quieter and quieter like i have i have watches that they have been used but they're very good condition but if you if you press the buzzer you can just about hear it so it's quite quite low anyway if, you, if I press this one here, look. See how loud it is? And you know what? I'll tell you something else that's really sad. I hate pressing the buttons on this watch. I don't want it, I don't want anything to be worn out. Like these buttons on top here, they wear out very quickly because they hit two little pads on the bottom. And these are notorious for the pads to wear out. And then you've got to press it harder and harder and harder. So I'm not going to run through it, but it's just, it's nothing special, the feature. So you've got an alarm. Let's see if I can, hold on. Let me, if I can just put the alarm on for you. There's a stopwatch and this is how it operates. And you've got a timer. And here you've got a countdown timer, uh, not a countdown timer. This is a, a twin timer they're called. So you've got two on either side. And that's basically it, nothing really special. It's, got, it's what features most watches have, like most Casio watches, shall I say. Um, yeah, and that's it really. Um, it's just a bloody beautiful piece. I just love it. And also, I'll tell you what I like as well, which are, an, by the way, look, I'll just explain to you. See these straps here? They fit over here. Let me get one out for you, and I shall show you, because I have some spares. Somewhere I have spares. Where are they? Oh, there are. So you see these straps here. They are not your normal straps. They're a bit different to them, but you see this part here, that bit that flaps over there? That's the bit that goes against this silver back plate, which clips on and off. It's not going to fall off, but it just clips on nice and tight. But to cha ever change the battery, you have to take these straps off. And what makes it an absolute pain, another one that has this as well, is these. Uh, let me show y'all. Like these here, let me show you this one. This is actually a good example. This is for the AE21s. But you see this here. See that flap that comes around there? That's the bit, let me show you the pin. That's the bit that hits on the silver plate. 
and you change the batteries on one of these or an AE, fitting these against is really, really tight. I, I absolutely hate doing it. And I dread doing it as well. But um, yeah, so what was I saying with this? Oh yeah, I, I like the way this comes over here because it makes it a great smooth finish on your on your hand. But what I don't like is I don't like ever changing the battery on these because it is an absolute bloody pain it is. Do you know what? Um, let me put this back a minute. So you know that blue one I just showed you on the in the case? Well, I was changing the straps on that because I found better ones. I'm going to drink my coffee quickly. And I put such a lot of pressure in changing um, the straps over. I don't know what I've done, but I must. I just couldn't get it in the hole very well. And I had to put a lot of force just to get it close to the hole so they can clip in. Not on this watch, the, the same as this, but the blue one I've just shown you. Well, by the time I've done it and I turned it around, the whole display went completely off. And I thought, oh my God. And then I changed the battery, reset it, and it's still this, something happened to the circuitry, it just would not work. But something disturbed inside, I took it apart, put it all back, and now it's all working. It's, it's no biggie. But I just thought I'd tell you that. That's how much pain they are in um, doing that. Let me put these straps back in a minute. I don't want to um, lose things. So, yeah, and that's where we are. This beautiful watch. This is my absolute favourite out of every watch, all of them. I'll show you my next favourite one, and you probably know what it is because you're all subscribers. Uh, I think it's this one here. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I had to keep just two Casios and get rid of my hobby, oh no, it would just literally be these two. Love this. I've always loved this. This is what got me started in Casio. And this is what made me fall in love with it. It's stuff like this. Uh, so both, if I had to keep two watches, it'll be these two. But I don't think I can narrow it down to two. It'll have to be the AEs as well. They'll be um, my top watches. In fact, I should do um, my top 10. I don't think I can narrow it down to five. There's too many beautiful ones. I can probably do 10. I do, I, I tell you what, I do a video this week and I'll do my top 10 Casio watches and why I like them. But it's obvious why this is so beautiful. There's a beautiful red button here for starters. Love all that. Like ejector button. Yeah. This is a remote control watch if you're quite new here. So this is what changes the channels came out in 1992 actually 93 it came out but there were some in circulation in 92 and this probably is probably apart from the f91 is probably their biggest seller and they reissued this again in 95 96 and in fact exactly the same watch the only th difference was it was the module inside it's slightly different it was a white background instead of a back, black background, the plastic. Um, one like this one here says Japan, the original one, uh, the re-release said China. So there was Japan, Korea, I think so Malaysia, and the last ones were um, China. But either way, there's a huge following for these watches and a ton of people want these. Out of every watch, no, out of most people that message me, they're asking about these. Have you got a CMD40? Brand new one. And I do have some brand new ones, but I have to keep them because they're really non-existent. And um, yeah, I'll have to keep them. Yeah, that's it. Um, I don't know if there's any formal video or not. I wasn't really going to do a video today, but I see this beautiful watch and I just thought, oh, I need to do something with it. And I've not featured it on my channel, but I spoke about it. I've sh shown you pictures. Um, let me know, guys, what do you think? Do you like this? I think this looks lovely. More than lovely. You know how I feel about these sort of watches. 
you know the problem is, well, I've got a very greasy hands, always oily. I used to be um, an engineer, so precision engineer. So I used to mess around with oils all the time, and I think it just, I don't know, just got, must have got into my skin. I've got, always got oily hands, and I don't like to touch the plastic too much. And um, beautiful. Do you know another thing I like as well? So I'm not slating it at all, but you see the strap here? So you've got the case and then the strap starts. On this one here, the case matches the strap. So the strap starts from here. This is the case. So you see what I'm saying? It's just like a massive mold. It feels it feels like it's all fits together. And that's what I'm, that's what exactly what I love about Casio. They didn't have to do anything remotely to all this detail. They did have to put a line there, the mold. They didn't have to do that. They didn't have to make all this mold like like here. This isn't. And you can see where the strap is, where it pivots here and here. This one, you can't. It just it feels like it's just one complete piece goes all the way around. Didn't have to do anything remotely like that, but that is what makes Casio one of the best watch manufacturers, designers, just the cleverness and always a step ahead of anyone else. And that's why they're still going today. Though I don't believe Casio are anything like they used to be. I wish they had this enduring, they should bring out stuff today with modern days it doesn't matter what the phone's got. It should still bring out and still keep that credibility. Like they, it should be still a, it should still be ahead of the times, but it's not, is it? Anyone can agree that they're bringing out a lot of reissues, but I don't agree with bringing out reissues. They should just leave the stuff back in the eighties, and they should bring out new stuff. Oh new stuff new ideas and i don't know what but i'm gonna maybe start thinking about ideas the stuff they should bring out oh my god i keep falling down yeah do you agree guys well tell me what you think but listen i'm gonna call it a day i'm gonna do another video and and any comments put them down below do you love this watch as me as much as me have you got one if you've got one Please send me a picture. This is the only one I've ever seen. Never seen one in person. If you got one, tell me. Right. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And if you've got any questions or anything about watches or what module or you want a copy of an instructions problem, I've got no problem with that. You can message me on Instagram, which is um old casio collector but instead of spaces you just put an underscore where the spaces are right cheers then bye, -bye.